Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. I am your Bible study host, Chris Bailey, and you may hear me but not see me because we're on the road. We're going to try something a little bit different, and we're going to go strictly with the audio. And since we can't get quality video where we are right now on the road, and so hopefully that won't take away from our experience, just give us something a little bit different to enjoy one another. If you are being blessed by the study, we do want to ask if you would take the time to like, subscribe, and share, but above all, live what it is that you're listening and hearing this week as we turn our focus in our Bible study to Old Testament faith. The two are not distinct. And a lot of times we've separated the two when we see the Old Testament. Well, it was all about works, about what you could do. And yes, there were many who made that mistake, but that was not the mission of the gospel, even in the Old Testament, as we're going to learn, because what happened and how they lived and believed, even in this time, reveals to us today how we ought to live and believe still in our hope, and that's Jesus Christ. So without further ado, let's pause for a second and ask for the Lord to speak to us as we study. Lord, we thank you that as we realize that our faith, our experience is grounded in what has gone on before, may we have an appreciation for the past that allows us not to repeat its mistakes, but to live on its promises, even those we've seen revealed before. That's our prayer this week and today as we study in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Our anchor text for the week is in Galatians chapter three, verse 13, which says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. This is bad news that becomes good news for each and every one of us, because Christ has redeemed us and he accomplished that by being or even becoming the curse of the law. He became sin itself, we're told in 2 Corinthians 5. But as we look at these verses, it's important for us to realize that what Christ accomplishes in that verse in Galatians 3.13, it is the same thing that those in the Old Testament believed in before he accomplished it. And we're going to see that revealed today in our big three. As we talk about Old Testament faith, the first point that we want to understand is that there is no such thing as an Old Testament. Really, it's just what happened before. The idea of the Old Testament or the New Testament, even the words themselves, Old Testament, are not even found in Scripture. And so that's why it's important to realize that this limitation that we put on uh, as, as humans on the, on the word and on what the gospel accomplishes, it's not in Scripture. In fact, in Galatians 3.14, says that the blessing of Abraham, that's an Old Testament brother, might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Not only those Gentiles. In fact, when Abraham was around, there was no such thing as a Gentile because before Abraham, there was no such thing as in terms of a nationality uh, or, or, or ethnicity as a Jew. So the idea that uh, the Old Testament is somehow inferior, the New Testament superior, it's simply a matter of timing. It's just what's happened before, because the same blessing that God intends for Abraham, he intends on Gentiles in his day and even today. In Galatians 3.26, it says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So there's no time limitation as far as who God hopes will receive his redemption and accept his salvation, because in Christ, we're all his children. And then in Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So what separates us in time Christ unites us by his sacrifice. So when we think of the Bible, what we normally call Old and New Testament, really we should see it as the Lord would have us to. And that is the first or before and then the after or 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 the um, what did you say? Former or latter? That would be the latter. And so in this case, the Old Testament is just what's happened before the cross. And then the New Testament is just what's happened after. But it's still the same movie. We don't have a part one or part two. This is one movie, one long movie, about 6,000 years old based on scripture, but it's still one movie and what has happened before the cross and then what has happened after. This is how we need, and I hope in our study this week, we'll start to identify 
the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, because when we stop putting it away, we then can hold on and embrace some of the promise and the power and even the faith that we see manifested in what many call the Old Testament. So in our second point for the day, that is that a faith rooted in the Old Testament testimony is a faith rooted in Scripture. This is why we do not want to throw away the Old Testament, because it is still Scripture. It is the before Scripture, and it is essential to our salvation, to understanding and experiencing and encouraging our faith. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, it says it this way, the Scripture and the Scripture. Notice no difference between the timing, old or new, before or after. But if it's scripture, the scripture for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Someone we even recognize in Old Testament times preached it to Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. So again, God does not see it as something old. It's just what's happened before because it is scripture. It is valid. Today, Romans 1 verse 2 says, which God or which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. This includes the whole body of Scripture. Again, the whole movie, not part one and part two, but the prophets in the whole movie make up the expression of God's will to us. Galatians 3.22 says, but the Scripture hath concluded all under sin again. Those before the cross, those after the cross, in the same way all were condemned, guess what? That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So again, the, the invitation, Abraham manifesting his belief by the life he lived, he's reflecting his faith through his works, but he is not creating his faith through his works. That same experience that Abraham had, he wants us to have that God wants us to have that now. He wants us to believe now, just like he did. And so that's why it's so important to see that the Old Testament, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's powerful. It's essential because our New Testament experience is rooted in what has gone on before. In fact, that brings us to our third point for the day. And that is that, indeed, our New Testament experience is rooted in Old Testament testimony. If you throw away the testimony of the Old Testament, you weaken and, and, and more often than not, you're going to eliminate the root of your New Testament experience. Because in Galatians chapter three, verse six to seven, it says, even even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye, therefore, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So the same testimony, the same witness, the same experience that he had, God wants to share that with us. Going over here in Hebrews 11, 4, it says, by faith, Abel. Is he an Old Testament or New Testament? He is an Old Testament witness offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which Abel obtained witness that he was righteous. This is someone being righteous in the Old Testament. And what we often call the old idea of, of, of righteousness, which was by what you did. No, Abel showed his faith. He showed, because so it says by faith in the same faith in Abel was by faith in Enoch. He was translated. He should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. And before his translation, Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. The Old Testament testimony is the root of our New Testament experience. Over in verse seven, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not as seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, which by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. This was around in Noah's day. This promise and those living it, they were around even in the before testament. So why can't we experience it today now in the quote after testament by faith? Isaac in Hebrews 11 blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. How did Isaac do it? He did it in faith. He gave that blessing to Jacob, even though he was stealing it. He gave that blessing to Esau, even though he didn't deserve it. But he did it in faith that Jesus, that the Messiah, that the sacrifice was going to accomplish his work that his sons might be blessed as he was promised. Hebrews eleven twenty four 24 says that by faith, Moses, 
when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. These brothers and sisters had the same faith. Yes, sisters too, because by faith, the harlot Rahab in Hebrews eleven thirty one, perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. So we are seeing people in what we call the Old and New Testament manifest a faith that is realized that blossoms in the New Testament, but it doesn't get rid of. Of what happened before any more than the petal of a flower its fragrance and its color doesn't eliminate the necessity of the seed because if there was no seed there would be no bud and if there's no bud there would be no beauty in the same way we want to not reject but we want to receive the experience of the old testament and see the footprints and the paths that they walked in and realize that if they made it I can too. And then you have the added benefit of seeing where they messed up. That's what I don't want to do. That's where I don't want to go. I have their mistakes to learn from to build my testimony. So as we come together tomorrow, I want to pray that as we try to understand the idea of reckoning righteousness or reckoned as righteous, what does this mean as we see in the book of Galatians? Well, we're going to see how this is manifested by looking back at the experience of those in the what we call Old Testament or what we're now going to call in the before Testament to realize how they were able to count Jesus as their savior even before he was born. How much more now after the cross can we have the blessed victory and count Jesus as our righteousness until next time, which I pray is tomorrow. Let's all remember that in Jesus change is good.